Star Citizen is finishing up 2023 in style with a brand new patch 3.22, server replication layer testing at scale, which I was just in, and it works, three new vehicles, and a roadmap for 2024 that shows a breakneck pace in which we will be getting some of the most anticipated features of the entire game over the next six months. There's so much to talk about, I don't know where to begin, so I'm just gonna start with the latest replication layer test. But before I get into those awesome details, first I have a quick word from today's sponsor. Payday 3's first major DLC is here. Syntax error pits you against a high-tech AI-powered data center called Scry Digital. The goal is stealing combat data for a cutting-edge drone operating system. Now, Scry's AI sins will throw everything it can at you to stop you from completing the mission. This includes a running commentary on your performance as it throws an army of SWAT teams your way. The DLC includes the new heist challenges, a soundtrack, story mode scenes, four new suits and masks, plus a weapon pack with three new guns, the War 45 SMG, the FSA 12-gauge shotgun, and the FIK 22 TLR Marksman rifle, plus weapon attachments, a new weapon charm, and weapon stickers. Grab the Syntax Error bundle with my link below. You can play it on the Epic Game Store, Steam, Xbox Series consoles, and the PlayStation 5. The bundle is also automatically included in the six month and year one season passes. Alongside the DLC, the devs also dropped another free major update for all players that includes a new enemy with a cloak shield and drones, a new skill line, more free cosmetics, and tons of gameplay updates. All right, back to the new replication layer test in Star Citizen. I popped into this, it's on the tech preview channel of Star Citizen, so it's not a part of the live servers or anything like that, but I popped in there and you turn on the display infograph in the upper right, it says server meshing is true which technically people have been debating about this means server meshing is working. It's just working between the game server and the replication layer. Normally for the bigger picture server meshing stuff, the replication layer will be interacting with multiple servers. In this case, it seems like it's just interacting with the one game server. Now, surprisingly, the game seemed to be running just as well as a live server, which unfortunately means that the AI were mostly unresponsive while I was engaging them, but otherwise it seemed to be going pretty well for a large scale test. And I would imagine if the first stage of replication layer testing goes well, then the next stage will be a crash recovery where they'll take the server offline. Everyone playing will kind of freeze up for a second and then they'll bring on another server. And in theory, everything will just resume as normal after that next server comes online. So that'll be an exciting update since 30Ks, basically servers crashing in Star Citizen has been one of the most problematic aspects of trying to play the game in a live environment since pretty much ever. Now for the live servers, there's also the Luminalia event going on. It's basically the Christmas or holiday season of Star Citizen, and they're doing like a 12 days calendar. If you go to the website and click on the little calendar buttons, you will get rewards like this pink machine gun here that is now account bound. So I'll have it pretty much forever. Also, if you're signing up for a new account and you use a referral code like mine here on screen, you will get actually a really sweet armor set. This one here, and you get like a multi-tool and tractor beam with it. It's honestly a huge quality of life upgrade to spawn with these items already in your inventory, especially a multi-tool and tractor beam. Pretty cool. Now, of course, the 3.22 patch dropped to live as well, which is a huge upgrade for the whole salvage system. You can now completely salvage ships. There's new container mechanics with them. Uh, there's three new vehicles in the 3.22 patch, like this really cool Santaki. Yeah, I think this is the highlight vehicle of the whole patch for me. It's just very neat looking, pretty ship, great visibility, lots of firepower, fun to fly with its maneuvering thrusters, allowing you to accelerate in all directions. There's also all kinds a new fun outpost to explore on Microtech and Hurston. There's also new locations for events like Jump Town. Uh, the other vehicles in there are a cutter variant called the Rambler. This one adds more quantum fuel but sacrifices some of the storage capacity of it. It's just sort of a slightly different variant if you really like the cutter. Luckily for Drake users though, it can fit as many bodies as you want in the back, which really comes in handy for most Drake-related activities. Then there's the 
X1 hover bike, which I gotta admit is a really cool hover bike. I don't really like the hover vehicles in this game because one, the controls are kind of wonky, and two, there isn't really any mission purpose built around them yet. It is coming, but this is one of the more elegant ones out there. If you like hover bikes, it's a small, sleek one that seems like it could fit in a lot of different vehicle cargo bays. Then of course, they're rolling out their new hair system into the game, giving players a lot more hair features, but I think this is gonna get upgraded significantly with the upcoming character editor, and apparently that is not far off. Jared dropped some pretty big bombshells on the latest episode of Inside Star Citizen. In a segment called the 2020 Forecast, he detailed the first half of 2024 and what we should expect, and it sounds bananas. Firstly, Master Modes, the giant overhaul to spaceship flight mechanics for exploration, combat, I believe that'll include the new quantum jumping system, persistent hangars and cargo elevators are coming, the FPS combat improvements that we saw at CitizenCon, like better reloading systems where you can take ammo from your backpack, weapon wear and misfires, new scope rendering, dynamic crosshairs. Then there's the EVA system, which has been teased for quite a while, where you kind of drift through space in a forward motion and you can grab onto things outside. Uh, looks really cool. The new visor and lens system is coming. The new loot screens is coming, which is very much needed. Item interaction, basically the current inner thought system is getting a complete overhaul with how you interact with the world around you. There's gonna be new shopping interfaces and mission apps and stuff like that, which sounds awesome. Then we're getting the character customizer, which goes well beyond hair, but into actually just tweaking your face in a really cool way, but also giving you even further control over things like hair, like controlling your dye and hair length and stuff like that. Uh, the updated Moby Glass, which is a huge thing. The Star Map, which is probably everybody's most wanted feature in the game. The massive distribution centers, previously known as UGFs or underground facilities. This is where giant raids and major mission systems will take place. He mentioned four, five, or even six new vehicles coming just in the first half. Uh, this is huge for the first six months of 2024. And honestly, he said that wasn't even the only thing. Alpha 4.0, which means server meshing and pyro connecting to Stanton, is targeted for a summer 2024 release, but he said that there will be more tests like we had before, where players will be able to hop into pyro and test out the new features. They're gonna add more planets and moons and content that people can get to, uh, test out things like the new MFD systems that are coming, resource management. In Jared's own words, he said that 2024 is shaping up to be the watershed year for Star Citizen. Basically one of the biggest years of its development since the beginning. And then he capped off the ISC saying, and that's just the first half of the year. So in terms of what's in store for the entirety of 2024, they're definitely hyping it like crazy right now. Every single major feature that he talked about on that list would be a huge upgrade to the game, offer tons of different types of gameplay or quality of life changes for players, and I normally would expect to see one, two, three of those things launched in the first six months of 2024. Giving us all of them would be a content injection, I think, unlike most fans of this franchise have ever seen. So. Very excited, somewhat skeptical, but uh, I think my excitement's overriding that skepticism somewhat. There's also a pretty interesting Star Citizen Live with the AI team talking about AI. It's pretty long and like most of the live events, the really important information is just in tiny little nuggets of it. The big takeaways for me were about how AI works when the server FPS drops. So when you open up your display info graph while you're playing Star Citizen, you'll see your client FPS, which is how many frames you get in game and then the server FPS, which is how frequently the server is updating information that it sends to you. And when those server FPS drop below five, uh, it basically starts to scale back or completely turn off the AI responses. 
and they do this to keep the rest of the systems in the server functional so that players can still land and access uh, other things like their Moby Glass or terminals and whatnot. The team did mention that the replication layer will hopefully help out the AI systems as well. I didn't get a lot of confidence overall from the AI live stream. It seemed like they had a lot of cool things working behind closed doors and in the single player version of the game, but I didn't hear anything particularly encouraging about how much the AI systems were going to improve in the coming six months, year, or whatnot. I'm sure they will or I hope they will, but this game has a lot of technology pillars that have to be working flawlessly in order for the Star Citizen concept to work, and AI is certainly one of them. They also mentioned that AI server blades were, for the most part, already functioning and that lots of the capital or large ships that you see that are controlled by AI in the game and you might have to fight against them while turrets and other things are shooting at you are already controlled by the AI blade system, but uh, we didn't really get like a, a due date for when players get their own blade so that they can try and solo their massive scale ships. Hopefully AI performance is gonna see an improvement once 4.0 and some of the basic server meshing tech is online, but it's also entirely possible that the AI aren't really gonna perform consistently at a high level until maybe dynamic server meshing rolls around. So overall, the news coming from Star Citizen right now is very exciting. It's really getting me hyped up. When they say first six months of 2024, I mean, that's going to go by fast if they're dropping out this level of content. I mean, they're not going to drop it all at once. It's going to come in waves and I have a feeling it's going to be hard to even stay on top of. I can't wait. Very excited for it. Uh, let me know what you think about the latest 3.22 patch. I know a lot of people are enjoying it. There's a lot of new stuff to do. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And next up, check out this video on the toxic underground of Star Citizen. An interesting dive into what can go on in these massive multiplayer game communities. As always, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.